Good morning, students. Today I made a special video for 8th and 9th standard because the same topic will be repeated in 10th standard in chapter number 1. Right? So let's start. And it's a chemistry chapter, as you can see, there are lots of elements and valencies there you, you must be familiar with. Right? But today we will study some advanced topic on this. Means, what is the advanced topic? That is, we will use the valency of compound. You are just you are just familiar with uh, the elements and the valency. You are not familiar with the compound. So I have just cleared it in this video. So let's see. So I have written two statements to understand the valency as well as atomic number of the specific elements, right? And let's start. So hi, hello, listen, BBC New on Friday night. So what does this statement means to say? See, concentrate on this curly line. So here, capital letter X stands for hydrogen, that is atomic number one. Two, helium, three, lithium, four, beryllium, five, boron, C, carbon, seven, nitrogen, eight, oxygen, nine, fluorine, and N stands for neon. Okay? Now, come, coming to 11 atomic number, that is now number 11, C, Pepsi, Soda, Cola, or Kinti, Car. Usme bhi capital letters pe concentrate ki jiye. Ye Hindi hai to Hindi version. 11 number pe sodium. 12 number pe magnesium. 13 number pe aluminium. 14 number pe silicon. 15 number pe phosphorus. 16 number pe sulfur. 17 number pe chlorine. 18 number pe iron. 19 number pe potassium. Or 20 number pe calcium. Right? So what will be its valency? So I have prepared a table to remember the valency. Right? Starting from hydrogen, whose atomic number was 1, valency is also 1, helium 0, lithium 1, beryllium 2, boron 3, carbon 4, nitrogen 3, oxygen 2, chlorine 1, neon 0. Again the pattern is repeated for sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, but you to concentrate on phosphorus P because it's a special element or exceptional element having two or more than two valencies that is or 5, then comes sulfur with 2 valency, chlorine with 1 valency, argon with 0 valency, zinc with 2 valency, and as you all know that there are 2 elements which possess also 2 valency, more than 1 valency, that is iron and copper. Iron with 2 or 3, copper with 1 or 2. So, these all elements are very much familiar to you and you have used it once or many times, right? But you have not seen compound. So, let us concentrate on compound. That is ammonia, hydroxide, sulfate, sulfite. See the difference between sulfate and sulfide. Only three words are changed. Carbonate, phosphate, okay, and its respective valency. So why I have written all of this? In the first chapter of 10th standard, the first topic is to balance the chemical reaction. Now, in order to balance the chemical reaction, in order to balance the chemical reaction. Which all things are essential? Which all things are essential? So first thing that is essential is you need to learn chemical symbols. You need to learn chemical symbols. Then you need to learn valencies of all the elements that I have written on the board. Then you have to learn valency of elements. Then you have to learn valency of compounds. And then last, you must know Chris Cross method. Actually, 9th standard students are very much familiar about the compound valency as well as Chris Cross methods. But still, some students are confused with chemical symbol of many of the elements. Right? So, we will clear it today. Okay? So, let's start. If I am telling you that uh, give me formula of hydrogen, hydrated oxide. See. Hydrated oxide. Or another name is hydrogen oxide. So what you will write over here? Hydrogen, hydrogen symbol is H. Oxide means it belongs to oxygen, so I will write O over here. Now, what is valency of hydrogen over here? One. 
So I will put one under hydrogen. What is valence of oxygen over here? Two. So I will put two under oxygen. Then what is crisscross method? It's like cross multiplication that you use in mathematics. So you have to give this two coefficient to hydrogen and one coefficient to oxygen. So it changes to H to O and another name of H2O is as you all know water. Right? So this is this cross method which is used for forming ionic compounds. Right? Second, if I am telling you that give me the formula for sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid or another name is hydrogen sulfate. See the simple name of sulfuric acid is hydrogen sulfate. So what is chemical symbol of hydrogen? H. Sulfate SO4. Now see what is balance of hydrogen? 1. So I will put 1 under hydrogen. What is balance of sulfate? 2. So I will put 2 under sulfate. I will just give 2 to hydrogen, 1 to this and it will change to H to SO4. See, it is quite simple to form a compound using valences of the given elements. Right? You will feel too simple if you remember this table. Right? So, how to remember this table? You have to write. You have to write the statements to remember the 20 elements, then you have to remember the valency. Right? And valency in detail, I have explained you in my previous lecture that valency is totally dependent on the number of shell, which was proposed by Bohr's atomic model. Right? So right now we will not we will be concentrating on balancing the chemical reactions. How do we balance the chemical reaction? I have taught you many times, but still some students have confusion that where to put which coefficient or which number I have to multiply with which element, right? So let us concentrate on balancing. See, how water is formed, it is composed of two elements, that is hydrogen and oxygen. So let us write hydrogen and oxygen. As you all know that hydrogen and oxygen are gas and they always exist in diatomic state. Diatomic ka matlab kya hota hai? कि ये एक ऐसा एलिमेंट है जो अपने दो एटम्स लेके चलने लगता है, ठीक है? तो when hydrogen and oxygen mix with each other, it forms H2O. As you all know, how H2O is formed that we have discussed right now. Now the question arises, where, from where, which step I have to start balancing? So here I am seeing that in my reactant side, the number of atom of oxygen is two. But in my product side, the number of atom of oxygen is only one. So the rule is you have to write coefficient, right? So where do I write coefficient? Yes, you got right that I will write my coefficient in product side. But mostly the student makes mistake. They write the coefficient over here, then they don't balance the reactant. So you just have to remember like maths that this two is applicable for hydrogen as well as this two is applicable for oxygen. So if I am multiplying this two with two, then two multiplied by two makes four. Now see, hydrogen in reactant portion is four, here also hydrogen is four, here oxygen is two, here also oxygen is. Okay? So now you might be understanding that Balancing the chemical reaction is easy, but at most care is taken while placing the number to the reactant as well as products. Let us form the sulfuric acid. How the balancing of sulfuric acid is done? See, how sulfuric acid is formed when hydrogen react with sulfate, it forms sulfuric acid. See, this reaction is balanced or not. So some students don't concentrate on each and every atom and they always try to balance in each and every equation. Here you can see this equation is already balanced. There is no need to balance this equation. Right? Now I am giving one more example. Let us try with magnesium 
reacts with oxygen to give and it gives you magnesium oxide see magnesium means mg oxygen o2 gives you magnesium oxide mg o why mg o i have why i have written mg o over here what is valency of magnesium you can see over here magnesium valency is to oxygen valency it is also to if the same valency is there then you don't have to consider valency of any elements so here i am seeing that two atom of oxygen are present in reactant side but only one atom is present in product side so what i will do i will just put two over here so the problem is two is applicable for mg as well as o so i will just put two over see the equation is balanced you feel that this equation is balanced yes it's totally balanced see in reactant side there is two magnesium atom as well as two oxygen atom product side also there is two magnesium atom as well as one oxygen now you must be feeling what is present in suffix of mg one one is present so two ones are two same oxygen two ones are two oxygen atom are there in product side i think you might be understood how to balance the chemical reaction right see students do learn this concept very seriously because it will be repeated in tenth standard if you not remember valency of compounds as well as element you will be feeling too much difficulty in learning chemistry because there are five chapters in which each and every compounds have each and every different valencies right so they have written some chemical uh, equations to balance so let's try out uh, second equation then we will try first equation right so uh, from first step where do you think that i will put the coefficient so what i see that in product side there are two atoms of nitrate there are two atoms of nitrate right but in the reactant side only one atom of nitrate is there so what i will do in first step i will just put two over here see i have just put two over the nitric acid so what i have to think that i have to think this two is applicable for hydrogen as well as this two is applicable for nitrate okay so now hydrogen in product side increases from two from nitric acid and two from calcium hydroxide that is two plus two hydrogen becomes four this is the reactant portion nitrate is two so nitrate is same two calcium is one so calcium is one no problem oxygen is two oxygen is two same way i will write elements and the numbers calcium having one atom nitrogen is whole nitrate is two atoms hydrogen here is two oxygen is one now you can see that nitrate element is already balanced calcium element is also balanced but the problem lies in hydrogen as well as oxygen what i am finding that in reactant side hydrogen is 4 but in product side hydrogen is only 2 and oxygen in reactant portion is 2 but in product side it is 1 so what i will do i will just place 2 over here now when i am placing 2 over here 2 multiplied by 2 it becomes 4 so hydrogen will become 4 number same way 2 multiply by 1 to the oxygen oxygen will become so see it's easy but when you look to this big equation to you will feel that where i have put my coefficient so you just have to try with product and then you have to come to reactant side and you have to just balance it and if possible you can do the rough calculation under it and you can write the exact coefficient of the each and every atoms right so it was too easy now let's concentrate on the second equation see NaOH plus H2SO4 gives you NaOH4 plus H2 see first i will write reactant and products atom na is 1 hydrogen is 2 
1 plus 2 that is equal to 3 oxygen is 1 plus 4 that is equal to 5 and sulfur is going to be 1 no more atoms are present on the reactant side here sodium is 2 sulfur is 1 oxygen is 4 plus 1 that is 5 and hydrogen is 2 now you can see over here oxygen is balanced hydrogen is not balanced sulfur is balanced but sodium is not balanced so I will try with sodium here sodium two atoms is there so I will place this same two in the reactant portion so as you all know that two will be applicable for sodium for oxygen as well as for hydrogen so sodium will change to two oxygen will also change to two two so two over here two plus four oxygen will change to six right and here sulfur will change to no change in sulfur right so now see how much oxygen 2 plus 4 6 how much oxygen is there 4 plus 1 5 oxygen is there so what we have to do we just have to balance it and yes there is also change in hydrogen how much hydrogen is there you can see over here 2 plus 2 hydrogen that is 4 hydrogen is present but in product side only 2 hydrogen is present so what I will do I will just place 2 over here and as you all know this 2 is applicable for hydrogen as well as this 2 is applicable for oxygen so hydrogen here will change to 4 and oxygen here will change to 4 plus 2 that is nothing but 6 ok so you might be understood how to balance the chemical reactions how to balance actually the complex chemical reaction that you have not studied till now so this was the main aim to conduct this lecture as a video right so in your free time you can just practice it as much as you can because it will be helpful for you if you take science team also okay and i will give you some extra practice uh, reactions in whatsapp in our whatsapp group so you just practice from it if you take from 10 standard textbook only right you try as much as you can and study well maintain hygiene avoid social distancing right fight we will fight against corona and we will surely win okay thank you students